Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie with Creation and welcome to day three of this fantastic weekend of virtual experiences by some of our favorite Stargate franchise stars. Creation began its involvement with Stargate almost 20 years ago and in that time we've had the pleasure of meeting tens of thousands of Stargate fans around the world. Until we can get back to running live conventions again, we hope you enjoy this weekend's entertainment. For each of our panels, the top ten are Top Tipper wins a five-minute one-on-one video meet-and-greet with whichever actor is doing that panel. If you'd like to tip, go ahead and click that green tip button, which is located on the bottom left-hand corner of your Stage It stream window. The winning meet-and-greet will happen right after this panel, so make sure your Stage It profile is updated with your email address and phone number. If you'd like to update your profile, scroll up to the top right corner of this screen, click on your name, then click on Edit My Profile. There are not enough words to describe our first guest of today. She is an award-winning actress and director and our very own beloved Samantha Carter. Please welcome the one and only Amanda Tapping. Yay! This is so weird. Hi, everybody. Hello. It's so, I can't see or hear you, but hi. I miss you all. I wish we could hug. I wish we could be there in person to have a good laugh. And, um, and hug. I miss hugging. Does anyone else miss hugging? I miss hugging. Um, anyway, hi. Uh, I just I can't even talk to anyone. I wish that you're all doing well during this crazy, I'm so tired of the word unprecedented, but unprecedented time. Um, and I hope everyone's staying safe and that your families are all well. Uh, I have been um, power washing everything that I can find. <laughs> And that's been keeping me happy. And I've also been um, cleaning out all my closets and um, organizing my garage. So, yay. Super fun. Super fun. Hope to get back to work soon. The film industry is opening up here in BC. So I hope that that happens soon. Um, anyway, I'm going to start answering your questions because that's what we're here for. Cue, question, answer. Yay. Um, okay. Sally Whitesides, do you prefer directing or acting? Huh. <clears throat> right, right now. <clears throat> right now, I prefer directing. Um, but I look over at the actors and I'm supremely jealous and I miss it. So I don't ever want to stop acting, but directing has taken over and I love it. I love how uh, difficult it is. I love how challenging it is. I love how multifaceted it is. And I love feeling like I'm like a part of the crew and creating, you know, helping to drive the vision. And um, yeah, I really love it. I love it. Um, but I do miss acting. Um, Lauren, how did Magnus's voice, Lauren Horn, sorry. How did Magnus's voice evolve through Sanctuary? There was a big change between seasons one and two. Oh, was it conscious? No, Lauren, it wasn't. I know. Was there a big change? Hmm. Oh, bloody hell. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is because I didn't realize that there was. Maybe uh, I fell more comfortably into the voice. <clears throat> so that's why you noticed a change. But it certainly was not conscious. Lauren, sorry. Um, okay. Nandri83. Did you enjoy playing Naomi on Supernatural? Yes, I did. I loved it. What was your favorite part about playing that character? Um, being a part of that family, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, I mean, I like playing evil. It's kind of fun. But hanging out with the guys, with um, with Jensen and Jared and Misha, because they're funny as all can be. I was about to say something different than that, but I didn't. Um, they're just amazing people. Really, really wonderful guys to hang out with. And they made it super fun. And I really enjoyed going to set playing Naomi. The weird part was then directing them after having played Naomi. And that was, <clears throat> that was crazy. But such a lovely show to work on. And I, I credit Jensen and Jared for being just true gentlemen. Um, so that it was really fun. Yeah. Um, Draconis Wing. Did I hope I pronounced that right? Amanda, how did you get the role on Killjoys? Loved you on there. How did I get the role on Killjoys? I think I was asked. I was just asked to play it. And I was a little bit nervous because I, I don't think I'd think i been on camera for a while. So I was like, ooh, can I even be on camera anymore? But I, yeah, I think I was just asked to do it. I don't remember auditioning for it. Um, Anyway, that was a lovely show to work on too. And I had hoped that I would get a chance to direct it, but it just never worked out timing wise. But that was a cool show. Um, Joe Janor Reed, 
If you could go back in time, who would you like to meet and why? I kind of am serious when I say this. I'd like to meet Nikola Tesla. Um, <laughs> for all the sanctuary fans out there, what? Um, but he was like super quirky and weird, but a genius. And uh, I would like to meet him. Um, I'd like to meet Queen Victoria and um, Winston Churchill. They're all, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it for now. I'm sure I'll think of more in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. and go, oh, I should have said. But anyway. Okay, <laughs> so weird. I can't see you guys, and I miss that. Um, Stargate Geek. Okay, but this is getting oh, from travelers to killjoys to continuum. How do you always get on board with the most amazing Canadian TV productions? Ah, they are amazing, aren't they? Um, I don't know. Uh, just I've been very blessed, and I don't want to overuse that word. Continuum. I got on because of Simon Barry. <clears throat> Simon Barry was. Um, one of the show running producers on that and still a good friend of mine and he hired me i didn't know him at all and he hired me um he took a chance on me at a time when my career was just starting directing and um and that's it and it went well and i got back for the next season to do two episodes and um have been a fan and a friend of simon um ever since travelers of course brad wright um one of my favorite humans on the planet um again one episode at the end of their first season <clears throat> and then ended up doing four the next season and four the season after that and <clears throat> that was also one of those like amazingly special shows like a great ensemble cast cool premise D i loved it i just loved it i loved the way it was shot i loved the crew it was uh and i you know i credit brad wright again with that and eric mccormick for being like you know just it, everything trickles down from the top and those two are just amazing. Um, so yeah, I feel very lucky that I've been able to work on those shows. Um, FA20 or FA20, uh, what's your favorite part of directing? All the prep work or the actual shooting on set? Hmm. I love prep and I think everything should be decided in prep. But um, about day five of prep, I start to panic and go, oh my God, I'm not ready. I can't make it onto the floor. And then I, I like don't want to leave prep because it's so comfortable. And then I get on the floor and I go, oh, I love being on the floor. It's the best thing ever. Um, so I would have to see the actual shooting because no matter how much you prep and how much you plan, something's going to go wrong on set or something's going to change or, you know, you haven't accounted for the sun coming in a certain window at a certain time or you're, you know, you're behind schedule and have to figure out a way to work, you know, make up your time and it's challenging and it's scary and um i love that so oh, there um have you ha okay sorry um joe jr reed again hi uh joe jr reed forgive me if i'm saying this wrong have you had any fangirl moments yourself yes yes okay so um i can tons of them um don french british comedian I was able to go and see the live final filming of The Vicar of Ghibli, <clears throat> which is a show I was a massive fan of. And I got to go backstage afterwards and meet her. And I met Lenny Henry. And then I met the cast. And then I was invited to the um, rap party. <laughs> I just stood there like <laughs> vibrating because there was all these actors that I was in love with um, flitting about. It was so amazing. Um, I met Elton John. And um, <laughs> I made a total ass of myself uh, because I was so nervous. And it was backstage at uh, um, the live show of Little Britain um, in Hammersmith. And I was invited into the VIP section and there was nobody in there. <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, Elton John and David Furnish walked in. And I was just like, oh my God. And um, I chattered so nervously and I was so like I'm sure I was sweaty and I was just like freaking out and then I said could, could I please have a picture <laughs> there's me like this and Elton John's like <laughs> it was very and then I saw the two of them the next night at another show which was Billy Elliot and he was like are you following me and I said no actually I was here first so I think you're following me <laughs> and he kind of went mm -hmm. and he walked away and I was like oh, keep blowing it with Elton John Anyway, yes, I've had a few fangirl moments. <laughs> Not proud of them. Anyway, 
fun. Um, okay, Christina Paness, Paness, Paness. Um, the character of Samantha Carter was one of my childhood heroes. How is it for you to play it for so many years? Lots of love from Italy. Hi, Italy. Hi, Christina. Um, how is it to play? Oh, it was amazing. I have to say, and I've said this before, but the moment I read the script, um, or actually the moment I read the sides for the audition, I was like, this is a really cool character. Oh my God, I really want to play this. And I just loved her strength and her integrity and kind of ballsy. And I really loved that. Um, <clears throat> and then over the course of time, the writers obviously wrote to each of us, you know, to how we were playing the characters. They wrote to with it. Michael was playing Daniel, and of course, how Rick was playing O'Neill, and how Tilk was playing, or Chris was playing Tilk. Um, and so it sort of became a bit more organic. And then, sort of later seasons, it was how do I find a new way into this character? How do I keep her interesting? How do I, um, you know, how do I keep it sort of vibrating inside of me to, to make it, you know, feel real and not feel state and boring? And so it was just, it was interesting every year to find a new challenge, to find a new way to play her, a new angle on her. Um, and often at the beginning of a season, it was just a matter of walking around in the army boots and sort of feeling that physicality of her again. But it, it was such a gift. What a gift that character was. Um, that whole show was, yeah, a huge gift. So um, thank you for asking. Um, okay, Saul Marin 19. Hi, Amanda. What's your fondest memory of working on Stargate SG-1 and or Atlantis? Terry S. Sorry for the surname. Um, okay. Uh, what's your fondest memory of working on Stargate? Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, there's hundreds of them. Oh, my gosh. Like <laughs> hundreds. Um, I would say... You know, it's a bit nebulous, but when it was the four of us together, uh, and often when we were on location and the sun was shining and we're just hanging out together, waiting for the setups and laughing and being stupid, those were my fondest memories of just, just feeling like a part of the team. And especially, you know, as we were starting to get to know each other, just that sort of newness and joy. Um, and then at the very, very end, when um, we did our last scene, and just that sense of accomplishment of <clears throat> 10 years and all the adventures and the sadness, but also the pride of having done that. And that night that we shot the final, final uh, episode and the final day, um, we all just hung out. And I think it was in Ben's trailer together. And we all just hung out. We all just like sat in each other and, you know, <laughs> hugged and cried. And it was amazing. So lots of fun memories from that. <laughs> Um, Claire Cowan, uh-oh, what topping do you love on pizza that your family does not like? Green olives. I love green olives, but my family is okay with it, but they'll pick it off. That's my answer to you, green olives. <clears throat> with the pimento inside, yummy. Mm. Okay, uh, from a while ago is the questions, is the person's uh, handle from a while ago. What would Sam slash Helen be doing during quarantine? Um, Sam would be studying and looking through her telescope um, and uh, probably just fidgeting with gadgets. Um, and I guess, I don't know, are we quarantined in the Stargate program? You think, I guess we would be. We wouldn't be allowed to travel to other planets for fear that we would take COVID across the galaxy. So, yeah. Okay, so that Sam would be Sam would be at the base all every day, just in her lab doing her thing. Helen would just be looking after the sanctuary and her creatures, um, and not time traveling or anything like that. Um, yeah, they, but they're both workaholics. Sadly, um, that's what they've been doing. Um, Krista Martin. Do you find anything while clean? Did you find anything while cleaning that you'd completely forgotten about? Any amusing stories from finding crap? <laughs> Funny, you should ask, Krista, because uh, I was just in my meet and greet and I was saying that I had been cleaning out my garage and I found every single Stargate script in boxes, huge boxes of 
every script from Stargate and Sanctuary. And I was asking, and maybe you guys in the comments can sort of tell me, but I don't know what to do with them. I mean, it's literally over 200 scripts. Over, well, with Sanctuary, like 250, 260 scripts or more. Um, and I don't know what to do. Like, should I throw some of them out and keep the special ones, auction them off for charity? Does anyone want to buy the entire Stargate collection of scripts with my notes in them? Um, I don't know. That's the craziest thing I found. And I knew they were in there, but it was like suddenly seeing all the boxes pulled out and going, holy crap, that's a lot of, to answer your question, that's a lot of crap. It's not crap, it's good stuff, but I don't know what to do with it. It's too much, it's too much. Um, okay, Esat Tuna Erda. If you were given the chance, which celestial body in the solar system would you like to visit? Hmm. Hmm. I'd actually like to go to the moon, to be honest. I know that there's a lot of other places I could go, um, but the moon, I'd like to look down uh, on Earth from that perspective. Um, even though I have, of course, when I was flying you know, in space. But uh, I would like to do that, me personally, Amanda. Um, okay. Uh, Lutabon. Which character do you most identify with? Sam. I would have to say. I most identify with Sam Carter. Um, there's parts of Helen that I really love and admire and uh, aspire to be, but I also find her a bit of an enigma in terms of the choices that she makes, but that's what made her really fun to play. Um, but Sam, certainly for her her loyalty and her dedication to her work and um, her kind of goofy sense of humor, a little bit like me. <laughs> um, okay, Catherine Sigmund, hi! Um, is there anything in life that after lockdown you'll appreciate more or approach differently or focus on more than before? And then in parentheses, big hug. Hugs, to be perfectly honest. I will focus on hugs more than I did before. Um, what's been really interesting with lockdown is that when I'm working, I'm so busy and I'm working 14 hour days and all I really have time for is my family. And, um, you know, a lot of my friends, we just don't, we just don't have the time to get together. And during quarantine, what I've done is um, I have a standing date on Tuesdays with two other women who are in town um, uh, who I <clears throat> just love to pieces. And we get together at 7.15 every Tuesday night with a glass of wine and we Skype and um, just catch up on our lives. We all have kids and we're all busy and, and we just catch up. And it's just been so nice to connect on that level. Uh, and then on Thursdays, I have um, uh, Skype with um, a friend in Halifax and a friend in Toronto, and they are women that I worked with in Budapest. And um, we just do every Thursday to connect and um, catch up and feel. It's grounding because it's like everyone's going through their own thing and it's just so nice to connect. And I'm hoping that what I will approach or focus on more than before is keeping those connections alive. Um, and every Sunday, my family gets together, um, my dad in California, and my stepmother and my brother in Chicago, and my brother in Toronto, and my mom and I, and we all um, Zoom and play trivia and hang out. So that kind of thing. That's what I'm going to focus on, is making sure that I keep those connections and don't get too mired down in work. Okay. Uh, Blake Monteith, what is the most dangerous stunt you did on Stargate? Ooh. 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 Um, <laughs> I can't remember what episode it was. Darn it. Um, but it was <clears throat> running out of a house as it explodes with um, uh, Agent Barrett, I want to say. Um, and we had to run down the set of stairs and then jump over this kind of pony wall and land on these huge mats as this house was exploding. And there was like a one-shot deal, right? Like they're blowing up glass and all sorts of stuff. And it, and the cameras are looking at us. And we practice so many times. And every time I do the run and I go to leap and I do this little gymnast thing, I don't know what. And, and they were like, Amanda, just, just jump, just jump. Don't do the little skip step before you jump. And practiced and practiced and practiced. It's all good. And then they handed me my gun. 
and then, which I didn't realize, and so I ran, you can feel the heat of this explosion as you're flying through the air and jumping, and landed on this mat, forgot I had my gun, and I knocked myself in the head with my gun. Um, but that was like timing, and there was fire, and there was, there was danger, there was danger. It was super fun, and I would do it again in a heartbeat with a rubber gun. Um, <laughs> Uh, Chris Muck, if you could film a novel, which one would it be and what would be your dream cast? Ooh, that's a really good question. I, had, I kind of fell in love with this trilogy of books years ago um, about uh, Napoleon and Josephine. And it's basically from Josephine's perspective. And um, that would be really cool to film because it takes place over a long period of time and so much happens, the French Revolution, and it, it's amazing. Um, epic. Um, who would my dream cast be? Oh. Oh. oh, can I get back to you on that? I won't, but I'll try. Um, who would make a good Josephine? Natalie Portman might be interesting as Josephine, but I don't know who would play Napoleon. Any suggestions? Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. I wish I had a better answer for you, Chris. Um, okay, uh, Sci-Fi Chemist. Hi. Um, did you try any new recipes during lockdown? Want to share some? <laughs> I have. I tried this wonderful uh, lemon caper chicken piccata. Um, last, oh my gosh, I've tried so many recipes. I made strawberry rhubarb pie the other day. Um, I'm going to Instagram. I'm going to Instagram a bunch of the recipes that I've done because I owe everyone the green goddess recipe, um, especially Nikki Beeman, who's been waiting for like 10 years. So I'm going to Instagram a bunch of the recipes that I've done. My Instagram is real lives mum, M-U-M, um, because somebody took Amanda Tapping. Hey, if you have my Instagram, I'd love it back. My name's Amanda Tapping. Anyway, okay, sorry. Um, so I will. I'll share some recipes. Um, Starlight, was there an archaeologist and real physicist on set of SG-1, and how did they help you? Did you research and understand all the concepts? Okay. Um, we did not have an archaeologist or physicist on set. Uh, we did, however, have the United States Air Force um, liaison, not all the time. Um, our scripts were vetted through the Pentagon, and we did have the Air Force come up every now and again and check in, uh, which was awesome. But I studied, I actually studied. I, I took uh, Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Time and devoured it and was able to break down all the concepts into layman's terms so that I understood them so I could explain them to other people. And yeah, I just, I studied. So I did in the moment understand what I was talking about. Could I um, understand it now? No, I'd have to study it again. <laughs> it's a lot of information and I couldn't blow up a sun personally. Um, for political reasons. <laughs> um, okay, Green Eggs and Sam, what a great handle. Um, which Magnus costume was the most uncomfortable, challenging to wear? P.S. How did you run in heels? <laughs> that was challenging. The heels were challenging. Um, what was the most uncomfortable or challenging to wear? I think when she goes back in time um, to the 1800s and she's wearing that brown leather outfit that's like Victorian looking, but kind of got a modern twist on it. It was beautiful, this costume, handmade by our amazing designer, Christina McQuarrie, but um, it was uncomfortable. It was super tight and it was hard to move around. And the, the Victorian stuff, I didn't mind at all. I loved it actually, um, but that was challenging. And sometimes the pencil skirts in our present day with the high heels were challenging. Also because it's really hard to hold your stomach in all day. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, Amy Susan, are there any TV shows that you've discovered and fallen in love with recently? Um, uh, oh yeah, of course. Uh, what have I been watching? Liv and I have just started watching The Witcher, which I find really cool. Um, oh my God, I'm gonna forget what shows we've been watching. Uh, 
I kind of have actually fallen in love with Modern Family, which I never really had much of a chance to watch, and it's now done, but there's 11 seasons of really funny stuff. Um, what else have I watched? And you know what? I'm going to forget. I've forgotten. I've forgotten what I've been watching. Um, the Crown, I rewatched, which I love. Um, yeah. Ugh. Okay, let me think about that. It's going to come to me again, three o'clock in the morning, and I'll call you. <laughs> um, Nebbia92, aside from rare instances on convention stages, will we ever have the chance to see you do improv comedy again? I hope so. I hope so. I would love to get back on stage. That's kind of one of my goals <clears throat> for the next year or two, is to get back on stage. Yeah. Um, Nikki B, hi. Uh, the Flash episode you directed was great. Thank you. It seemed like you got all the toys you needed. How many cranes did you get? Okay, those of you who don't know, I love techno cranes. Um, uh, I got the moniker techno tapping for a while in Vancouver because every show I wanted a crane. Um, how many cranes did I get on that? I had the big one when we were at the dam, <clears throat> overlooking the Cleveland Dam. Um, and I think I had, I must have had another one. I think I had two crane days on that show. Um, the Flash was super fun, and I cannot say enough about Grant. Um, what a lovely man. What, and, and actually the cast, I had a fantastic time with the cast. It was a really nice show to work on. And, but Grant made me laugh so hard, and he, <laughs> he had guest stars, and I would go up to give direction, and he'd turn to the guest stars and go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about her. I apologize, she's gonna say something stupid, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, he was just really great, he was super fun. Um, okay. Uh, Get shot. I'm gonna say that wrong. Um, do you have props other than scripts <laughs> from any of the shows? What do I have? I have some of Helen Magnus's stuff from her office, which I kept. Um, little things like that were on her desk. Um, I kept my SG1 flight suit and my jacket when my badge with the badges. Um, otherwise, no. I haven't really kept any props. I just took a few things from Magnus's office, but that's it. And at the end of Stargate, I think we were all kind of like, oh, can, should we just walk away with our costumes? What should we do? So I just took my jacket and flight suit. Um, Spooky 101, any chance of the Sanctuary or Stargate crew getting together for a virtual script read or quarantine audio special? <gasps> what a great idea. That's a great idea. That would be super fun and just take one of our scripts and read it. Wow, okay, thanks. I'm gonna, let me look into that. That's a great idea. That would be really fun. Uh, Andrea, hi Andrea. Uh, it's been forever, like half an hour. Um, not being able to travel right now. If you could go anywhere right now, where would you go? If I could go anywhere right now, where would I go? Um, I'd like to see my family in England. Not the best place to go right now, but that's where I would like to go. Um, or actually, I would love to go up to Haida Gwaii, which is um, sort of northern, northwest BC, um, and just be up there, be up in nature. That, that, that's my answer, Haida Gwaii. Um, Rock Ryan, what rank do you think Sam, Sam Carter would be now? Um, well, she was... Yeah, she'd be general. Wasn't she general? Did she end up being general? <laughs> oh my god. I was full bird colonel. Yeah, she'd be a general. <sighs> yeah, she'd be general with like two stars. Um, Manez, have you played any video games or currently play any? No. You know what? I don't. I don't play video games because I suck. Uh, I couldn't master Ms. Pac-Man and uh, that pretty much shut me down. So I don't play video games. I should. My daughter does. She's pretty good. But um, yeah, no, I don't play video games. It's terrible. Uh, sorry if I disappointed you with that answer, but Pac-Man sunk me. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, Juju Beans. Hello, Amanda. I love your work. I read an article saying a potential sanctuary reboot is in the works. Can you confirm or deny this? I cannot confirm or deny it. Um, the IP has been bought uh, by someone, uh, not the IP, but the ability to, um, 
sell existing episodes and to make new episodes has been bought. Um, there's been a bit of back and forth, but I honestly don't know what's going to happen with it. Um, so right now I'm sort of focusing on other work until I have some confirmation about where it may go. Um, okay. Um, Angie von Asgard. <laughs> Would you say yes to a permanent leading role in a TV show again? Or are you happy doing guest stunts and continuing your directing work? Um, if it was a show that I, yeah, I would, of course I would say yes to a permanent leading role in a TV show. Um, but it would have to be the right character and um, the right show. Um, but I would also like to direct it. I don't want to give up directing. That's just, I love it so much. So, um, but yeah, I would absolutely, I'd love to do another series. Um, I like the feeling of a series. I like the family atmosphere on a series very much. So I'd like to do that. Um, Sanctuary 08280, hello. Will you be directing a movie again? And is there a Robin story from Space Milkshake? He's always vague. No, uh, I'm hoping to direct a movie. Actually, yes, I have a script that I'm looking at right now. Uh, well, not right now, because I'm talking to you guys, but <clears throat> still we're here. Uh, Robin's story from Space Milkshake. You know, when I first read the script for Space Milkshake, I was like, this is super weird. I don't get it. <laughs> And Robin like had to convince me to do the movie and I'm so glad he did because it was so much fun and it was so goofy and to work with Kristen Kruick and Billy Boyd and of course Robin whom I love um, but he uh, I guess there a story there's always a story with Robin like he's always dropping his pants for no reason just out of the blue walks away from people walks down a hallway drops his pants I don't know why um, he has a nice bum, but still. Uh, <laughs> um, he was actually one of the producers on it, so he's a little bit more serious than he usually is. But um, but now Robin's like a terrific director and producer in his own right and writer. So um, yeah, kudos to Robin. Um, but Space Milkshake was a blast. It was the middle of Winnipeg or middle of winter in Regina, and <clears throat> which is freezing cold. And we had so much fun. Um, yeah. Uh, Amanda's Unicorn. Hi. Uh, any show you would love to direct? Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of shows. I'd like to direct in Europe again. Um, there's a couple of comedies in England that I'd love to direct. Um, boy, would I ever love to direct. Um, oh, my God, I'm just Afterlife. Ricky Gervais show. Is that it? Is that what it's called? Afterlife? Life After? Oh my God, I'm blanking. That's another show I've been watching. Um, but I would love to direct that. Holy moly. Um, <clears throat> Meg Rollo 4. What was it like going to your first convention? Oh, wow. Um, our first convention uh, for a lot of the Stargate team was a wolf convention. Um, gosh, I don't even know how long ago that was. We were really new. Like maybe we were <clears throat> shooting our second season of the show. And it was amazing. Like, I have no idea what to expect. And we walked on stage and people screamed and cheered and it was just like, I'm looking around for the Beatles, wondering what's going on. Um, <clears throat> but it was so wonderful. And I got so many great stories from people about their lives, excuse my voice, and uh, about what they loved about the show, how they could relate. It was, it was amazing, it was amazing. And I realized then, <clears throat> the sort of addiction of meeting fans and how much you get from that experience and how much it propels you, you know, <clears throat> on days where you're feeling kind of the, um, to be able to remember those moments and the people that you've spoken to and the stories that they've told you and go, oh, wow, yeah, that's why I do this. This is amazing. So yeah, my first convention was uh, incredible. It was great. Um, oh, Stargate Geek. Have there been any reunions of Minnie and Terlene? Yes, and in fact, uh, Terrell and I were just texting yesterday, yesterday or the day before um, about getting together for dinner. Um, yeah, we miss each other. And it's been weird with this um, you know, quarantine to not be able to see anybody. But now in British Columbia, the restaurants are opening up and you can do it with social distancing. And um, so we're gonna get together for dinner, hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks. And I'm also gonna see Brad Wright next week for dinner, so that'll be fun. 
Um, Ket, uh, do you have a favorite song for when you're down and a favorite for when you're up? Hmm. It changes constantly. I'm sorry, I should have read the question first and then not navel, you know, because I it changes constantly. Uh, so, like Simon and Garfunkel is always a good one for when I'm down. Um, and lately, uh, Halsey, uh, her acoustic work is amazing. Um, and then when I'm up, uh, like any sort of, oh man, like any sort of dance music is always fun. I make Olivia crazy because I dance around the kitchen. She does not like it, but it's pretty good, I have to say. Um, <laughs> dance music okay sorry um jay steinbrenner how do you think samantha carter's promotions from captain to colonel help her character evolve over the series oh i mean definitely i think she moved up probably a bit faster than most people do but it's a tv series so um she deserved it because she was saving the planet from aliens and bad people um but I think it helped her with her um, sense of confidence and uh, in terms of how she dealt with people. I think when she started, there was this little bit of an edge to her about having to prove herself as a woman. And I think that that kind of relaxed. And I also think that she, as she got promoted, um, I think even humbled a little bit her because she realized the, uh, the responsibility with being promoted. But I think it actually it helped her character evolve most definitely. Um, okay, Narnas, how has the guitar playing been over the lockdown? And have you done any duets with Olivia? We're actually working on our guitar playing together. Um, and it's one of our goals. We haven't done a lot of it, surprisingly, because we've been baking and power washing um, and cleaning up garages. But <laughs> it's actually one of the things on our list. We have a list of things that we want to do every day. And uh, so the guitar playing is one of them. Um, Sarah Nicole, what was it like working with the two casts on Pegasus Project? The two casts on Pegasus Project. I'm confused. Probably should have answered, shouldn't have answered, asked that question because I'm not sure. Am I crazy? Have I forgotten what that means? Somebody, I'm looking in the comments. I have to get back to you on that. I have to get back to you on that. Sorry, Sarah. Um, Pitch was the line, it's my gun, I swear, ad libbed. Ooh, I don't think it was actually. I think that um, that was one of the lines in the script. There's a lot of things that we ad libbed on Stargate, especially Rick. <laughs> I think that one was, I think that was actually in the script. But <laughs> I'm just remembering that whole, uh, that was so much fun. And my dad actually came to set, he came up um, from California to visit. And he, so he was on set when we were filming uh, that episode uh, in the cold, frozen studio. And they gave him a big coat and he sat there and I know it was just really fun. And there I'm cuddling up with Richard T. Anderson and my dad's like, mm. um, but yeah, it was super fun. Um, okay, Elena G. Carter is such a strong female character. Do you have input into how she was portrayed or disagreements with the male writer's portrayal? Um, after the pilot, when I found out that I was going to continue with the role, <clears throat> I spoke to them just about writing her, not trying to write a woman, but just writing a person. And I said, write as if she's a guy, and I'll just bring an inherent femininity to it. <clears throat> but I don't think she needs to be written as a woman, and especially as an angry feminist. Or um, So that was sort of off the top, the biggest thing. Um, and then they would talk to us at the beginning of season, sort of, what do you want to see happen to your character? What haven't we explored? <clears throat> so they were very amenable to us talking to them about things that we wanted to see, uh, which was great. Um, so kudos to them. Um, PB and J, <laughs> have you thought of doing a motivational book or vid? You're always so bright, upbeat, and love to laugh. It would be inspiring. Oh, <laughs> I am never, no, I haven't thought of that. Huh, really? I mean, I love to laugh, but I always thought that that was because I was a bit of an idiot, but I'm um, you know, happy idiot. Uh, wow, something to think about. Um, that's really a lovely question, thank you. Um, 
Oh, Pegasus Project was the crossover episode between SG-1 and Atlantis. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, so what was the question <laughs> again? Brittany, I need your help. Go back to that question. Um, the Donut. What were your thoughts on Stargate Origins? And do you think they should explore it more in the future? Um, I only saw one episode, I sad to say. Um, and yeah, I think they should explore it. Absolutely. I think there's so much fodder in the Stargate universe. Um, there's so much possibility. Uh, so yes, absolutely. Oh, here we go. Sarah Nicole. Thank you. Sorry. What was it like working with the two casts on Pegasus Project? Now I get it. Okay. So the Atlantis and SG-1 cast coming together. Great. I mean, Stargate is really one big, crazy family. Um, and of course, David was um, so is so much a part of our show anyway. Um, I don't know. It's really interesting when you get the different personalities coming together and how the characters have played different parts of themselves, right? So you have two leaders who approach their shows very differently and approach their casts or their, their team very differently. Um, but I think the thing with Stargate was because our studios were literally, we were in the same studio and there was a hallway and two doors separating us. We were, we were constantly crossing over. We were constantly seeing each other up in the production office. We were constantly hanging out. We were all on the same lot. Our trailers were, you know, close together. So it was just, it was like family. That's, it was great. It's just family. That's what it is. Um, Amy Deanna, has Olivia seen any Stargate or Sanctuary? Yeah, she's seen a couple of Stargates. Um, and she, I think she watched a few more Sanctuary because she was around when I was filming it. And um, she still gets freaked out by the brown hair and the accent. <clears throat> um, but yeah, she, she's watched them. I think she likes it. At least she says she does. She might be a really good actress and be lying to me. That's possible. <laughs> but she has watched some. And I'll show her ones that I think are like super fun or goofy or, you know, so she has for sure. Um, what was, okay, sorry. Uh, NJGR. What was your favorite thing about working on N with an E? Oh. Um, wow. The cast of N with an E is incredible. Amy, Beth, McNulty is so luminous and wonderful. And the girl, like just to get those kids together, amazing. Um, but probably my favorite was working with Moira Wally Beckett, who is the showrunner writer, who's a genius and um, also just an incredible person and gave me such scope, gave me so much opportunity for scope and playing and I just loved it. And I also have to say, um, my first and second AD, um, Michael and Lauren, they were so much fun. So you just kind of find those connections and it helps get you through your days. And um, yeah, I just, like everything about that show, I loved it. And the challenge too, like, you know, I did a show that, uh, an episode that took place in the winter and we had a big thaw and um, I had to like drive around in a pickup truck looking for fields that still had snow in them and then try to get a horse and cart onto the fields with the snow um, or in the summer dealing with the mosquitoes, like just, but everyone pitched in. It was just, it was super fun, super fun. Um, articulate writer, did you feel differently when you were a brunette? Yes, strangely I did. And because my hair was long and, um, you know, luscious, <laughs> I felt, uh, <laughs> I felt, I don't know, I think I felt stronger somehow when I was a brunette. But then Olivia was like, Mom, you don't look like me anymore. Enough. You don't, you're not Helen Magnus anymore. And so I, I chopped it all off and went back to blonde. And I actually like it. I prefer having um, short hair. But, uh, but yeah, I did feel a bit differently. A bit less conspicuous, maybe. Um, last question. Last question. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, uh, XF chemist, sci-fi chemist. What would SG1 members do if stuck together for months during the lockdown? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, we'd get up to no good. I'm entirely sure. Um, 
I think if it were on Earth, um, it would be bad. We would probably party a lot. And um, maybe off world, Sam and Jack might finally do something. I don't know what. <laughs> Uh, it certainly be a lot of laughter, that's for sure. Um, okay, oh, when you're ready, oh, <laughs> when you're ready, just wrap up. Oh my God, is that it? Is that it? It's 1130, and it just went by so fast. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, thank you to Creation for um, putting this together, this virtual event. How amazing that um, we at least get to do this. Um, I can't wait to see you all, and I can't wait to hug and um, please stay safe during this crazy time and um, hug your loved ones. And um, yeah, gosh, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for being here today. Bye guys, thank you. Thank you, Amanda, for being with us today. Tipping is now done and Heather Rose 95, you are the winner of the five minute one-on-one -on -one meet and greet with Amanda. So check your email right now. Make sure you're signed up for our email list and follow us at Creation ENT on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for announcements on more virtual content. We'll be back in 30 minutes with Ben Browder, so don't go away.